As we get further into the Switch's life cycle, I'm starting to notice a lot of big commonalities between the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo 64. Part of this, I believe, is just the way that both of these have taken those big first party franchises and sort of flipped them on their head a little bit. For example, we had the Nintendo 64, Super Mario 64, and then the Switch had Super Mario Odyssey. Those both were very revolutionary in very similar ways. Then of course, uh, the 64 had Ocarina of Time, the Legend of Zelda game that was like no other big 3D fantasy RPG at the time. You couldn't find an experience like that. And then with the Switch, it's the same thing for Breath of the Wild. There's no other open world game better than Breath of the Wild right now. It's kind of a widely shared opinion. It's almost genre defining. But I think the biggest commonality that I found between the 64 and the Switch is their strong focus on local multiplayer games. The Nintendo 64 was actually the first home gaming console ever to feature four different controller ports. So at the time, this was actually the only console where you could play with more than one other person at once, which sounds pretty crazy in today's day and age where almost every game in the market has some sort of multiplayer aspect, but at the time, this was super revolutionary. Nintendo almost revolutionized gaming in that sense, and as a result of this, we saw some of the best local multiplayer series to be developed on that console. Super Smash Bros. was of course a huge title spawned from the Nintendo 64. In fact, it's still probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest game today. But perhaps the second biggest fun party game that we got from the 64 was Mario Party. Of course, it's changed quite a bit since those days, but the fundamental idea of it being this sort of virtual board game where you run around super competitive and you play mini games with your friends, that is still intact. And like I said, the Switch is another console with a huge focus on local multiplayer, and it looks like they're really trying to take that idea into account and make this one of the best Mario Party games to be released, if not the best. For this first feature I want to talk about, I sort of have to cheat a little bit, just because it's not a completely brand new feature. In fact, it's actually been in the majority of Mario Party games already, but we haven't seen this feature in over 10 years, so that's why it's on my list, and that is that the original coins and star system is back and here to stay, hopefully. Uh, no more mini stars. If you haven't played the last couple of Mario Party games, they kind of just combined the coin and star system into the mini star system. So you just kind of gain these mini stars from random places across the map. And a lot of the time you'll get the same amount of stars as the people you're battling against because of that whole train system, which is also gone, but that's not one of my points. But you know, earning up your coins and then buying the stars with them, you know, you can have a bunch of coins, but not have any stars. Just that little gameplay feature really makes the difference in the Mario Party games, and I'm so happy that they reverted it back. My second point here is that this is going to be the largest roster of characters that we've ever seen in a Mario Party game, which is pretty exciting. We've got 20 different characters to choose from. There's a lot of the traditional characters like Mario, Peach, and Yoshi, but we also have some kind of abstract characters that we've never seen in a Mario Party game before. Uh, we got Diddy Kong, we have a pom-pom creature. You can play as a Goomba a boomerang bro, and even a Monty Mole. These are a lot of characters that haven't been playable in any Mario games before, so that's pretty exciting. And that sort of leads me to my next point, and that is that there's character-specific dice blocks in this game. So each character has a sort of different loadout in their dice block. For example, Mario has kind of a balanced loadout. So you, he has a one, and instead of a two, three, and four, it's just all threes. So he has three chances to get threes, and then it continues on. Or there's a more kind of gambly characters like Bowser, who has two slots where you can actually lose three of your coins if you get an unlucky roll, but also has 
two or three slots where he can get a six or even higher. So, it, you know, it's kind of different depending on what character and it kind of plays into that character's idea, you know, like Bowser's kind of this shady guy, so he can take very high risks, but there's a lot of uh, detriment to him if uh, if he gets a bad roll. So I just really like the way that they designed the different blocks. Uh, that'll be a very cool feature in Super Mario Party. Moving on to my fourth point here, and it's actually one that they didn't show any gameplay of, but they sort of talked about a little in the treehouse, and that is that instead of a generic sort of main menu type of place where you navigate through all the modes, there's gonna be an overworld or a type of hub world. Um, they called it the plaza is what it's gonna be called. We didn't see it, like I said, but I'm imagining it's sort of like Mario Party 6 where there's a town and each building in that town is a different mode and you can just travel to any of them however you want. I know it doesn't sound like a huge deal, but presentation makes a huge difference for me, especially in games like this where they're a little more casual. Just navigating the menu gets sort of monotonous and makes you want to look at it less. So those big hub worlds really make a difference for me. So. Yeah, there's going to be kind of an overworld where you navigate through modes instead of a generic main menu, which is pretty cool, I think. Speaking of different modes, they actually showed off a few brand new modes at the treehouse, and a couple of these actually did really get me going. The first one was the pair team adventure. It's called something like that. I can't exactly remember what it's called but it's the same idea as the traditional Mario Party where you just go collect a bunch of coins and then spend those coins to buy stars and that's how you win. But instead of the semi-linear path of the traditional games where you can only go in one or two different ways, it actually presents you with this whole board of square spaces, kind of like Fire Emblem, where you can move freely in all directions across the whole grid as long as it's travelable. And you know, I would kind of be upset if they changed the whole game to this system, but from what I saw, it looks like it could kind of switch it up and still have the same idea, but still be really fun. Um, I'm very excited to try this mode. The second mode that they sort of showed off is called Toad's Rec Room, and they didn't actually show what the mode will look like, but they did show some of the mini games within that mode, and these are all based around the idea of having two separate switches in handheld or tabletop mode and kind of collaborating with the two. If you saw the trailer, you might remember the mini game where there was two teams playing in tanks against one another. They both started on different switches and they could kind of travel to the other switch. Looks like a really cool idea. I'm not sure how that technology works at all. I have a little better idea after watching the treehouse. It's kind of a bummer that you'll only be able to play those mini games if you have two different switches, like to be honest, I don't have any real life friends in Colorado that have another switch, so I'm kind of SOL on that. But I really do like the idea. It's pretty cool and I hope I get to try these mini games one day. We still haven't seen any gameplay for this last mode that I want to talk about because it's still in development, but they did just announce it today. Um, it's called Mario-thon. It's this sort of, from what I understand, it's curated playlists of mini games and you just fight for your high score, which sounds pretty basic, but it sounds like kind of the mode that you can play if you just have like five or 10 minutes to play and you just kind of want to do some mind numbing gaming for a little while. Uh, the most interesting and probably coolest part about this mode is that it will have an online feature. So they'll have leaderboards and uh, you can play against other people in real time, which is pretty exciting. This is the only online functionality that has ever been in a Mario Party game thus far. I'm not sure if this is as far as that online functionality will extend to. I really hope not. I hope that we can play actual online games of big competitive you know, actual board game type games, but either way, we're getting online functionality in Mario Party, so that's something to be excited about. They got to show off quite a few new items in the Treehouse presentation over the last couple of days, but perhaps the coolest item that they got to show off was called the Buddy Phone, which introduces this new buddy system into the game. Basically, you call a friend and they drop down from the sky with some balloons, 
quite an entrance. It's a very cool animation. And they just follow you around the board wherever you go for a couple of turns. And besides just that following animation, all they do is uh, roll their dice right after you roll yours. So whatever number you roll out, they'll roll and both of those numbers will be combined and you'll get to travel an extended amount of spaces for a certain amount of time. So it's basically just like a double dice block from previous games, but they added that little nuance to where it's like, oh, it's a buddy and it, it just makes it a lot more fun that way. Uh, they also added the buddy system into that pair adventure mode that I was talking about earlier. Uh, during random points in the game, a random buddy will just drop from the sky and then whoever gets to that space where the buddy landed first, they'll just adopt the buddy and have them follow him around. I really like this buddy system. Just, I've said this before in videos that strong characters make strong games and just adding more characters wherever you can is really gonna help whatever game you put them in. The last feature I want to talk about is sort of smaller and more of a quality of life type of feature, but it's definitely game changing. If you've played a Mario Party game before, you know that when you start up a mini game, it'll take you to this screen where it has a video of some CPUs playing the game, uh, a general description, and the basic controls, as well as a button that you can press that'll take you to a practice mode where you can just practice without the risk of losing coins. Well, in Super Mario Party, th that button isn't there anymore. All you have to do is start playing the game. Instead of that video being shown of the CPUs playing, it'll just let you practice in that window instead. So there's no loading screen in between hitting that button and uh, going into the practice, and there's no asking everyone, hey, do you need to practice? Do you need to practice? You can just do it right off the bat. And so like I said, that, that's not the biggest change in the world, but I really think that will help with uh, just the time of big games in general, and just the general flow and uh, pattern of Mario Party. So that's just about everything new that we know so far about Super Mario Party. There wasn't a whole lot of information in that initial trailer that we saw at the Nintendo Direct, but in those Treehouse presentations, there was quite a bit of gameplay and just general information there. If you're interested in these games, I definitely recommend watching those full presentations. Um, there's pretty much a presentation for this game on every day of the Treehouse. I definitely recommend checking those out if you are very excited for this game. There's some good stuff to watch, but they also said that there's still quite a bit of stuff that they are waiting to reveal. It's still in development, so there's gonna be new modes and just a bunch of new information in the next couple of months, so watch out for that. Let me know your thoughts on Super Mario Party down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This has been Max from Max Culture and thank you so much for watching.